and welcome to episode 13 of Sir Astro's Marvel Crisis Protocol painting series. In this video I'll be painting Doctor Strange from Atomic Mass Games Marvel Crisis Protocol. To prepare the model I've assembled Doctor Strange and the spell effect separately to be glued together later on. I then primed the main figure in black followed with some Xenothal highlights sprayed from above as usual and I've simply primed the spell effect in white. We'll then apply the base colours for Doctor Strange and I'll be providing some preliminary colour to the spell effect with some fluorescent green and yellow. We can then provide our highlights which will include a little object source lighting before assembling the parts and providing a few finishing touches. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the eyes using Vallejo's deck tan. I'm now going to place some pupils using black and I don't care too much about hitting the surrounding area as I've yet to paint the skin tone. I'm now mixing some beige red with some black to create quite a dark skin shadow tone which I'm using for the surrounding area. You can see I'm carefully trimming the eyes back to the size I want as I do this. I'm now mixing a lighter skin tone and using this to paint the rest of the face, leaving some dark lining around the eyes. I'm now going to paint the hair using a roughly equal mix of flat black and Caspian blue. And for the sides of the hair I'll be creating a pale grey by mixing in some white sands. Here I'm just using an intermediate tone to create a rough gradient. For the blue outfit I'm using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of deep blue and violet. I'm now mixing some of this with white sands to create a much paler tone for the design on the front. Some of these colours may need a couple of layers. For the yellow areas I'm using Sahara yellow darkened with a little violet. This will include the gloves, the sash and the rim of the cloak. You might prefer to keep things simple here and paint the rim of the collar in red along with the rest of the cloak. I'm also using this for the rim of the brooch. For the red cloak I'm using deep red once again mixed with a little violet. I might use a little less of the violet for the outside of the cloak which would naturally appear lighter.
Notice that I'll be painting the feet later on since they're currently embedded in white tack. As usual, I like to tidy things up as I work. Here I'm just providing a white undercoat for the gem. And I've now chosen to provide some preliminary colour to the spell effect using some fluorescent green and yellow. You may of course prefer to use the more commonly seen fiery orange tones instead. All I'm doing is thinning the colours down a little and loosely colouring the effect in, creating some varying shifts of tone between the green and yellow as I go. I'm now just providing a second layer selectively to begin deepening the tone a little. I'll be returning to do some more work on the spell effect later on. I'm now finishing the base colours off by applying a couple of thin layers of the fluorescent green to the gem on the brooch. We're now ready to begin adding the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the blue outfit by progressing from the deep blue and violet base tone to a roughly equal mix of Caspian blue and Mediterranean blue, also mixed with a little violet. So here I'm creating my mid-tone, which I'm now adding to the base tone in a couple of stages. For the brighter highlights, I'm going to add some Caribbean blue to the mid-tone. Notice that I'm going to be pushing the lighting further for the areas that are closest to the spell effect, most notably here at the bottom of the trousers. For the places that will be closest to the spell effect, I might also add some of the fluorescent green. I might push these highlights a bit further later on once I've fully assembled the figure. I'm now going to give a gentle highlight to the pale design on the chest by increasing the amount of white sands in the base tone and I might also add just a hint of the fluorescent green. I'm just pushing the brightness a little towards the top of the chest. Next I'm going to highlight the cloak by adding a roughly equal mix of Antares Red and Fuchsia to the base tone in a few stages. Naturally, I'm keeping the underside of the cloak fairly dark.
This is the Pure Antares Red and Fuchsia mix. For the parts of the cloak that are near to the spell effect, I'm going to lighten things further with the addition of a little white and some sol yellow. and I'm now adding some additional white along with a touch of scale colours Irati Green. For the yellow areas, I'm initially highlighting up from the Sahara Yellow and Violet base tone to pure Sahara Yellow. I'm now adding some Sol Yellow mixed with a little Mars Orange. And for the brightest highlights I'm adding some white and some Irati green for any areas of object source lighting. Next I'm going to highlight the face and as usual I'll be creating some subtle variations of tone with the addition of some blue and some red to the original beige red and black base tone. For a more detailed look at the skin highlighting process you might like to refer to the earlier Kingpin episode. Here I'm glazing a little red up into the cheekbones to give the impression of a red cast coming up from the nearby collars.
For the brighter highlights, I'm adding a little white and some yellow, and maybe a touch of green. I'm now creating a slightly darker mix for the lips, using beige red and Tari's red and some black. And I'm placing a small glinting highlight on the lower lip. Next I'm going to highlight the hair by simply adding some white sands to the flat black and Caspian blue base tone. I'm going to push these quite far to create an almost glossy look. And I'm now adding a touch of pure white sands to the grey hair at the sides. Finally, I'm going to paint the feet using a roughly equal mix of black and petroleum grey. And I'm adding a few quick highlights with the addition of some white and a little Arati green. I'll be boosting these highlights a bit further in a moment once the figure is fully assembled. I'm now going to glue the spell effect to the base with some super glue, and I'm first scraping off the paint at the point of contact, so that I'm gluing plastic to plastic to give me the strongest bond possible. I'm also exposing the plastic where the ring meets the edge of the cloak. With the spell effect in place, I'm now going to paint the base as usual, using Vallejo's Stonewall Grey mixed with some black, and I'll also be incorporating a little pale green for a controlled amount of object source lighting. We can also do some gentle dry brushing to help pick out the texture, and of course we want to darken down all of the recesses. And as usual, I'm adding a little urban rubble sprinkled over a layer of thinned PVA glue. I'm now revealing the plastic on the edges of the cloak, where I'll be attaching Doctor Strange to the spell. And I'm using some plastic glue to hold him in place. With that done, I've decided to broaden the range of greens in the spell effect by introducing some darker areas. I'm mainly using varying amounts of Irati green and black forest green for this, possibly with the addition of some white to help blend things up to the surrounding tone. Along the way, I'm also boosting some of the object source lighting on Doctor Strange. Here 
Here I've decided to have some fun adding a simple particle effect to the areas closest to the rings. This just involves adding some small specks of pure white, then dabbing a touch of the fluorescent green on top. I've also chosen to add some of this sparkly effect to the rings themselves. Here for the gemstone, I'm just adding a small highlight of pure white. I'm now giving a final boost to some of the highlights elsewhere on the model. And I almost forgot the moustache. And this completes Doctor Strange. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the episode has given you some ideas as to how you might like to tackle yours. As always, you'll find a full product list in the video description, along with links to my latest album of music featuring tracks written for the series. My sincerest thanks go to the amazing patrons for funding these videos. You can find a Patreon link on screen and in the video description. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Happy painting!